the United States and England are having a Revolutionary War rematch. Should Mexico and U.S. fans root for each other at the World Cup? And Jack Graylish got a ball kicked into his face. We're covering all this on episode 17 of Tea Time with David. The U.S. and England are in the same World Cup group after the draw happened on Friday. I find it ironic where this whole show was a kind of making fun of English drinking tea, and now here we are where England and the U.S. are going to go against each other. And honestly, the online beef, internet trolling, everything has been some of the most elite. And mind you, the World Cup is not until November. We have so far to go, and I've already made fun of the English. Like, look at this one. I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy unless, of course, we're talking about my enemy, Gwyneth Paltrow. Fuck you, Gwyneth Paltrow. You know what you did. I'm going to say, U.S. undefeated against England in the World Cup. 1950 victory, 2010, 1-1 win for the U.S. The other teams joining the group, Iran, and the winner of the UEFA playoff, Scotland, Wales, and Ukraine. I could not be more excited for this group. And, you know, I know that England are going to be a big challenge, but as long as this guy is in the stands, we're going to be okay. Here are all of the dates for the U.S.'s games and the FIFA overlords who decided on the times of the games scheduled every U.S. group game at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Thank God, because some of these games in Qatar, if you live on the West Coast, they kick off at 2 a.m. So thankfully, the games are in the afternoon for us and it's going to be a great time. Also, some other huge games that I want to keep an eye out for. Mexico, Argentina is going to be played on November 26th and Germany versus Spain on November 27th. Mexico got a tough draw with Argentina, Poland, and Saudi Arabia. And listen, I know I'm wearing the U.S. jersey, but yes, I will be rooting for El Tri and Canada and Costa Rica if they get past New Zealand. I believe in CONCACAF solidarity. You know, I think it's best for the region if we progress. Back in 2014, when Costa Rica made the quarterfinal, you're goddamn right I was cheering for them. I thought they were going to get past the Netherlands. But the biggest game that I want to watch in the group stage is Ghana versus Uruguay. I want to see the Ghanans get revenge for that Luis Suarez handball in 2010. I am looking forward to this one. Moving over to Europe, you know, it's been a little bit since we've checked in with our Norwich City FC correspondent, Colby. Let's see how he's holding up. You know, Norwich have like an over negative 40 goal differential. Everything's going to hell. So let's just see how Colby's doing. Hey, Colby, how's Norwich doing? Get ready for the big game this weekend. Oh, and another news. Pedri. That's it. Oh, my God. Oh, no, get the camera. We're going to wrap this up with Jack Grealish taking a ball to the face. In the Champions League clash between Atletico Madrid and Manchester City, it got a little heated on the end. I'm not going to lie, this game sucked. I literally made a line graph of how badly I wanted to fall asleep during the game, and at halftime, I was ready to snooze, man. Atletico Madrid had no shots the entire game. Manchester City had two on target. The game really got spicy when Grealish took a ball to the face. And Angel Correa just lined up and kicked the ball, hit off Grealish's foot, and then into his face. Then the pushing and shoving started. I was actually awake for once is really fun and I want to see more of this energy in the return leg in Madrid next Wednesday. The National Weather Service in Shreveport has issued a severe thunderstorm warning. That is all for Tea Time this week. We'll be back with more tea, more soccer news, and everything you need to know about what's going on in the game. And thank goodness, oh, <laughs> I try to say every and all at the same time. <laughs>